Good morning, everybody. Carol, are you ready? Yes. To... Good morning. I was just I was just asking who are we going to start because the music has not ended. Good. Good morning to everybody. I hope you are enjoying a nice uh, spring morning. I am Carolyn Medel Anyonuevo. I'm the head of the education unit of the UNESCO Regional Office for Southern Africa. And I'm very happy to informally welcome you to this third edition of our Sustainability Starts with Teachers ESD course. This is the second time we, have have, we are having this online due to COVID. The first time we had it in face-to-face -face in Rhodes University. And last year we started the first face-to-face, -face, but this is now our third uh, phase, which involves countries of Eswatini, Malawi, and Tanzania. So I'm very pleased to welcome all of you. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce the, uh, he used to be our director at the UNESCO Regional Office for Southern Africa, and he has now moved in Nairobi as the regional uh, director of our Eastern Africa office. So without further ado, let me uh, welcome, allow you to welcome uh, Professor Hubert Hazen. Hubert, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Carol. Uh, let me first of all check, can you hear me? Can you see me? Yeah, we're able to hear and see you. Good, good, good to see you too. And uh, good to see so many uh, participants uh, connected. So dear colleagues and friends, uh, greetings from the UNESCO regional offices for Southern Africa and now in my new capacity also the office for Eastern Africa. Uh, a very good morning to you and, and welcome to all uh, connected to this uh, launch uh, webinar. Uh, this official opening webinar for the online course, uh, which is entitled Sustainability Starts with Teachers. Um, and this is for, for teachers and, and TVET educators. Uh, and this course will run uh, from today uh, till late October, I believe 26 uh, October this year. So um, I wish to uh, particularly uh, recognize the presence of our key partners. Um, and that includes Mr. Stewart, uh, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Education and Training in Eswatini. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Musa, the Principal Secretary of the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology in Malawi. Uh, Dr. Aquilapo, uh, the Principal Secretary of the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology in Tanzania. Uh, Professor Mabizela, the Vice Chancellor of Rhodes University and also the, the colleagues from Rhodes University uh, who are um, our key partners in the implementation of this important program. Uh, also Ms. Michelle Bouchard, um, the Senior Program Officer, Swedish CEDA. Um, the, the financial support coming from a Swedish CEDA. I always say Swedish CEDA because there is a Canadian CEDA, but then with a C. This is not to be confused with the Swedish CEDA with an S. Uh, country coordinators uh, and all partners of this regional initiative. Uh, dear colleagues, um, the sustainability starts with uh, teachers is a regional capacity building uh, program for teacher educators um, on education for sustainable development. And the overall objective is to strengthen, uh, and I will use the acronym ESD, you all know it by now, Education for Sustainable Development. So the objective is to strengthen ESD in teacher education institutions uh, for teacher educators, uh, from early childhood care um, uh, and education, uh, but also through and across the educational spectrum to primary, secondary education. And also very important in this program, we have also adopted the TVET sector, the technical vocational education and training. 
uh, forgive all the acronyms that we use, TVET in this case. Um, the, the program addresses in particular the SDG 4, which is on education, um, and uh, which is oriented, as you know, the, the umbrella objective four is uh, uh, to uh, the achievement of uh, educational quality within a lifelong uh, framework. And it focuses, uh, this program focuses specifically on target 4.7 of the goal. Um, and let me read that target. You, you have, many of you may have uh, read it and, and, and even worked on it, uh, but it's good for us to, to take up that. I think it is a very well phrased target uh, 4.7, uh, which requires all governments by 2032, and I quote from the document, ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, including amongst others, uh, through education for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyles, human rights, gender equality, promotion of a culture of peace and nonviolence, global citizenship, and appreciation of cultural diversity and of culture's contribution to sustainable development. Now, that's quite a long sentence, but it is a very comprehensive articulation of the fact that uh, education is probably the most uh, strategic way to uh, impose peace in the minds of people. Um, the program is active in 11 countries and uh, the 2021 uh, focus every year there are new focus countries uh, the, the focus countries for this year are Tanzania, Eswatini and Malawi and I'm therefore happy uh, to see the high level participation in this uh, opening event from these three countries. Um, the sustainability starts with teachers program aims to achieve four key objectives and let me briefly mention them uh, so that we understand what this program is about first sustainability principles are integrated into education and training environments with emphasis on curricular change in teacher education institutions and tvet colleges um, so that is the first objective the second is uh, ESD capacity of teacher and TVET institutions is enhanced. So that is another outcome. The third is ESD is reinforced in national education and sustainable development policies uh, in the Southern Africa region, in particular the 11 countries, but we're also working closely with SADC uh, to really share with them all the results of the program so that uh, eventually also the uh, all the 16 member states of SADC will benefit. Um, and then the fourth is uh, ESD professional networks are strengthened in Southern Africa region because we believe in the concept of sharing collaboration and jointly achieving the goal. And in this case, the target 4.7. So we, we started implementing this program since 2019 and I'm, I'm very happy uh, to share with you that to date, uh, we have 166 teacher and TVET educators in 77 uh, institutions engaged in uh, ESD transformative projects. And these projects, uh, uh, we, we call them change projects, um, uh, which are active in six countries, uh, and these are Botswana, Lesotho, Namibia, South Africa, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. <clears throat> In all the participating countries, so all 11, the, the sustainability starts with teachers uh, program has become an integral element uh, of the ESD for 2030, and that's the successor program of the ESD decade eventually. So the ESD for 2030 country initiatives. Uh, so the, this project, and I, I really uh, compliment CEDA with that vision to initiate this project in the region, 
has really been instrumental to position uh, ESD uh, at the country level. Uh, as you may know, ESD for 2030 is, is the global framework for the implementation of ESD uh, for the period uh, 2020 to uh, the end date of Agenda 2030. So that is indeed uh, the year 2030. And it places emphasis on educate, uh, the education contribution uh, to the achievement of all the 17 uh, SDGs. So it goes beyond the SDG for education and it is cross-cutting for all the SDGs because the, the, the theory of change here is that by uh, creating uh, stronger awareness and better skills to address sustainable development trajectories, uh, the education dimension of this will affect all the 17 goals. So country initiatives are therefore created to build momentum uh, to implement ESD for 2030 uh, around uh, five priority action areas. There are five action areas defined under this uh, ESD for 2030, and uh, these are uh, advancing policy, transforming learning environments, so new ways of learning, um, building capacities of educators, or empowering and mobilizing youth, and fifth, uh, last, accelerating local level actions. And I believe that is probably one of the most important actions identified to translate this in local actions on the ground. Now, this regional course is uh, an important milestone of the so sustainability starts uh, with teachers program and I welcome the colleagues in particular from Tanzania, Malawi and Eswatini, the focus countries for this year, as I said, um, I welcome them to participate actively in this online course, which is of course accessible also beyond these three uh, countries. So through this course, uh, participants from uh, the three countries in particular, we look into sustainability challenges in the Southern Africa region, and they will discuss how these can be addressed through ESD um, and through the integration of SDGs in the school system uh, and into the teacher and TVET education curriculum. And this is of course a strategic entry point for this project uh, all the way. That is that we have chosen teachers as a catalyst to achieve uh, this target 4.7. Uh, the regional course should uh, benefit participants uh, as follows. Um, first, by developing a shared understanding of the context for ESD in the countries. Second, by deepening theoretical and practical knowledge of ESD change processes relevant to teacher and TVET education in SADC. Uh, third, by expanding the understanding of the importance of transformative uh, learning and also uh, assessment processes to support that change. Uh, four, by appreciation and adoption of available ESD resources, tools and good practices from previous capacity building efforts in, uh, in other countries, uh, in the region and beyond. Uh, and this is also part of the methodology of this project. It is about sharing, learning together, developing together. Uh, the fifth is uh, by developing strategies to roll out change projects in uh, the teacher education and TVET institutions and lastly, six, uh, by initiating network support to enable the key project implementing partners to understand their respective roles and commitments and to begin the implementation processes uh, for their projects. So let me at this point therefore also express uh, my view that uh, we, we should start uh, really developing 
an even more ambitious successor program. As I said, this one is strategic in targeting the teacher level, the capacity building for teachers. Uh, but with a more ambitious program, I mean a program which, in addition to teacher capacity building, will take on board two additional dimensions. And that is, uh, first, ESD policies, strategies, and guidelines at the country level and at the regional level. And second, uh, since the proof of the pudding is always in the eating, uh, the development of uh, implementation of models on the ground in the schools, that's where the rubber hits the road. So uh, this is uh, uh, basically referring to the idea of uh, green schools or eco schools and to test out the programs in the schools themselves. So that would mean a flagship program having three levels of policy, capacity building, and school implementation. And these three levels interacting between each other. And this approach uh, will, I predict, uh, be very effective in generating strong progress on the ESD for 2030 along all the five priority actions under this program. So in closing, I wish to thank all of our partners for their support. Um, first, CEDA for providing the vision and the funding for this program. Uh, Rhodes University, our key implementing partner. In particular, I'm happy to see connected also Professor Hela Lotz uh, and also uh, thank her team uh, from the um, Environmental Learning Research Center at Rhodes University for the excellent work that uh, we have been doing together uh, and that led to the development of uh, uh, an online version of the course and that was really a very quick and smart way uh, in response to the COVID lockdown restrictions. Uh, let me also thank our partners in Sweden, uh, the, the Swedest um, colleagues for providing methodological support, mainly for the change projects. Uh, that has been very useful and please continue to do so. Uh, also the Southern Africa Regional Universities Association, SARUA, uh, they have been a valuable partner for supporting the program with its network and uh, to ensure higher education policy and leadership dialogues during and after the training programs. And last but not least, uh, thanks go at the national level uh, to national ministries of education, uh, to national uh, teacher education and TVET institutions for supporting and actively participating in this program. So I wish everyone a most uh, enjoyable course and, and a successful implementation of the change projects uh, in all your respective institutions um, and to make the goals of the program a reality in the nearest future. Um, I end by reminding of the wise words of uh, uh, Mandela, uh, who said, uh, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Uh, so please join us in making this happen. Thank you very much and over to you, Carol. Thank you, Hubert, for the welcome from UNESCO. I just like to mention that at the moment we have uh, almost a hundred participants. Now this was in contrast to when we had the face-to-face -face meeting in Rhodes where we had less than 50. Without further ado, I'd like to call on the Vice Chancellor of the Rhodes University, who has been our partner since five years. We've worked with them. We've started work with our Japan Fancy Trust and now with this Swedish funded project. We are very pleased and excited and privileged that we have such partnership and we're very happy to welcome the Vice Chancellor of the Rhodes University, Dr. Sisve Mabizela, who I met in 2019, where we had our first face-to-face -face Rhodes University 
course, and now we have our second online course. Professor Mabizela, please. Thank you very much, Caroline. Um, representative of the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency, distinguished Professor Hela Lotsesitka, course participants, distinguished guests, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, Mangwanani Akanaka, Dumelang, Habari Yasibui, Bundia, Mawabina, Khotsong, Mulweni, Sanbonani. On behalf of uh, our Rhodes University community, I offer our warmest welcome to each one of you to this exciting UNESCO Cedar Rhodes University Sustainability Starts with Teachers program. Had it not been for the COVID-19 pandemic, we would have been delighted to welcome you in person on our beautiful campus. I wish to extend a, a very special welcome to the participants who are joining this program for the very first time. I also extend a very warm welcome to all government representatives who are with us. I'm certain that you will find it most informative and empowering. Thanks uh, to the power of digital technology, even under these extraordinarily challenging circumstances of a global health crisis, we are able together, albeit virtually, to advance one of the greatest imperatives that fall upon our generation to ensure a sustainable development in our region and in the world. This initiative, which is a UNESCO capacity building program for educators to integrate education for sustainable development in all areas of education is one of the most important flagship programs in our university. And we are delighted with the kind of leadership that distinguished Professor Hala Lotsesitka and her team are providing in this incredibly important uh, initiative. We value and treasure immensely the incredible partnership we share with the, with the UNESCO Regional Office for Southern Africa. And we are deeply grateful to the funding agencies that have seen the wisdom of supporting this critically important initiative. The role played by the Swedish International Development Corporation Agency, SIDA, in this regard is acknowledged with much appreciation. We are equally appreciative of the productive and progressive role played by the regional governments in their support for the efforts to realize the sustainable development goals. Our world is faced with immense challenges. These include climate change, poverty, inequality, food insecurity, natural disasters, water scarcity, environmental degradation, diseases, and much more. Most, if not all these, are a result of the choices made by us as individuals and by our governments on our behalf. These are a result of the choices that show scant regard to the well-being of our environment and the planet that we collectively inhabit. The centrality of education in advancing all the sustainable development goals can never be overemphasized. It is in equipping young people of our region and the world 
with the appropriate knowledge, skills, and values that we can advance the goals of sustainable development. It is, it is knowledge that leads to attitudinal and behavioral change that will make young people of our region champions of and advocates for sustainable development. It is knowledge that helps people understand their relationship with one another and their relationship with the environment in which they live that will advance sustainable development. It is knowledge that helps people understand how to use our natural resources in a sustainable manner to sustain current and future generations. It is therefore vitally important that all our teacher training programs and our curricula at every level of education infuse and integrate sustainable development in all the learning that takes place from early childhood development right across to university. Sustainable development should in fact form a frame around which all education and educational activities are organized. In this way, we can equip our children and our youth with the knowledge and skills to interact with our environment, with our natural resources, and with one another with a view to ensuring sustainable existence. As we all know, knowledge without action is wasted knowledge. So as we equip young people with knowledge, we must ensure that that knowledge is translated into action towards sustainability. So if our young people have the necessary knowledge, skills, and values, they can develop a correct attitude to be agents of social change and societal transformation. We cannot build sustainable societies while women live in constant fear. Fear of being assaulted, fear of being raped, and fear of being killed. We cannot build sustainable societies while rampant corruption, conspicuous consumption, and greed continue unchecked. And we cannot build sustainable societies when poverty, hopelessness, and despair continue to define everyday existence of some in our communities. And we cannot build sustainable societies when flagrant abuse of power, denying of human rights, and denigrating of human dignity of some in our societies persist. We must address economic, social, and environmental issues in a coordinated and integrated manner to ensure sustainable development. And we must invest in the young generation to ensure a socially just, humane, and, and equitable society and cut on sustainable development. And this is important, and this is where education is so critically important in empowering the young people to play their critical role in ensuring sustainable development. I sincerely hope that this course will help deepen our educators' knowledge and understanding of the interrelatedness of economic development, environmental justice, social justice, human rights, 
and sustainable development. And that through this knowledge, we can act. Act individually and collectively and bequeath future generations a better and a more sustainable world than the one we inherited from the generation before us. May we all come to the full realization that it is in defending, advancing, and asserting the humanity of others that our own humanity can reach its fullness. And in the process, we will be able to ensure sustainable development in our society, in our region, and in the world. Thank you very much. Asante sana. Nkosi, Yaliboha, Nyabonga, Nyatogoza, Bayadanki. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sizve Mabizela, the Vice Chancellor of Rhodes University, our partner for more than five years now. Thank you for the, your inspirational uh, speech, reminding us of the importance of knowledge, skills, and action for the young people for sustainable development and the role teachers play. I think it's also important that you said that sustainable, sustainable development is not only about greening economy or just providing climate action, but in fact, it's very intricately related to gender-based violence, poverty, corruption, the flagrant use of power, and so many other things. So I hope that in the coming days, when our participants, our teacher educators come and meet these issues, they will see the interrelationship of these so many development issues that we are facing today. We are very pleased, as has been mentioned, to welcome senior government officials from the three countries, Eswatini, Malawi, and Tanzania. Previous to today's uh, opening session, we've had, we've organized national consultations, policy dialogues with senior officials in these three countries. And we're very pleased that we have been joined in this opening session by first of all, Mr. Bertram Stewart, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Education and Training in Eswatini. Mr. Bertram, the PS, please, over to you. Thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, I hope I am audible. Uh, yes, I you am... are, thanks. Thank, thank, thank you very much. I, I am I'm actually standing in for the principal secretary. Uh, I'm the under secretary in the ministry. My name is uh, Peggy Temba Kama. Uh, I will um, uh, speak on behalf of the, the, the ministry and use uh, the, the PSC's words that he has sent me to say to your colleagues. I, I hope now you can see this is the Peggy Temba. Yes, thank you very um, much. May I start by recognizing Professor Hubert, who was our opening speaker from Rosa. Thank you very much, sir. And may I also recognize Dr. Mabizela, professor from the Rhodes University, who has just finished his remarks. I also recognize the peers from the Minister of Education and Technology, or Science and Technology in Tanzania, Dr. Leonard Aquilapo, um, Mrs. Musa, Secretary uh, for Education in Malawi, Principal Secretary for Education in Malawi, and uh, Michelle Bouchard, uh, from uh, the, the Senior Program Officer, who's based in Sweden. Uh, I'm also told that there is also Caroline, um, the Director of Education of ROSA as well. Uh, I'm, I'm with uh, our own Secretary General, local Secretary General, uh, Pumzile. Uh, is also with me here. 
We also recognize our own focal person, uh, Ms. Sindisio Malizisa, who is our focal person as, uh, as a Swatini. And may I recognize all the colleagues that are here, actually, because I think that the, the list looks long. And um, may I get into what the PS has sent me to, to, to say to you, beloved people. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good, good, is it still morning? I hope so. I hope it's still, it's still morning here. Good afternoon in, in Tanzania. Uh, it is my pleasure to be part of this special occasion and to be given and, and, and uh, also to be given uh, the, the opportunity to share a few words at the opening session of this regional cause on sustainability starts with teachers. It's a very interesting uh, 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 topic and it's a very interesting, um, you know, it's going to be a very interesting session when you look at what it's all about. I'm, re I'm reliably informed that uh, sustainability starts with teachers aims at helping us to deliberate on how we can strengthen the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, in teacher education institution for teacher educators and for programs relating to early childhood care education, primary education, secondary education, uh, high school levels, and also TVET, that is technical vocational education and training, with a special focus on sustainable development goal number four. This goal is oriented towards the achievement of um, educational quality within a lifelong learning framework, specifically target 4.7 of SDG4 requires all governments by 2030 to ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, including among others, through education for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyles, human rights, gender equality, promotion of a culture of peace and non-violence, global citizenship, an appreciation of cultural diversity and of cultures contribution to the sustainable development. That is uh, actually target 4.7. As a country, uh, Estonia has made some significant strides um, in achieving the SDGs, specifically SDG 4, which I think we are about here. We have achieved free primary education while providing OVC grant at secondary and high school level. We are currently conducting an ECCD mapping to ascertain the number and status of services offered throughout the country at this level of education. This will enhance accessibility of children to schools. Uh, we are also looking at the TVET policy. We are also reviewing it now to improve its relevancy and skills. We're also looking at our education sector strategic plan. We, we were revising it, the, the, the 2010 to 2022 one is now under review uh, to incorporate issues of equity, access and quality at all education levels, including tertiary. Due to the COVID-19 um, uh, situations that we find ourselves in, we haven't started the assessment of literacy and numeracy in schools, which is also our planned activity. When it comes to education for sustainable development, ESD, it is worth mentioning that as a ministry, we regard this quite highly. Apart from the traditionally teaching ESD as a concept in selected disciplines such as environmental science, geography, agriculture, consumer sciences and sociology in education, ESD is used as an underpinning framework in the national curriculum, in particular during instructional materials development. We do integrate ESD and um, we, uh, uh, furthermore, we have a number of country policy documents that do speak to ESD as witnessed in our own national constitution of 2005 which clearly states that 
uh, it advocates for the promotion of and protection of the environment for present and future generations. The national education and training sector policy also states that institutional development should be aligned to the ESD towards the achievement of Agenda 2030. The national development strategy considers also, also puts, puts environmental management pillar within the ESD framework as one of the main priorities. Um, ESD is also integrated in the national curriculum of Estatini, although it is only through a, a few subjects, causes such as the sciences, the geography, agriculture, consumer sciences, and sociology of, edu of, of, of education. That's where we have integrated uh, ESD uh, in the country. Having said that, uh, it is worth mentioning that there are challenges, of course, faced by the country in trying to push the ESD agenda forward. In the integration, the major challenge, the major challenge is um, that um, we have a few cases where we are think we feel as a country we, we are lacking. Uh, we do lack uh, in the area of ESD policy. We don't have that ESD policy, which we will need to strengthen the systemic integration of ESD in education as a whole. The other constraint that we face is the um, you know, crowded teacher education curriculum. So now trying to fit something new will be is a challenge. The lack of knowledge and skill to deliver ESD at tertiary level is also what we think is also a challenge. Financial restrictions, which I think are universal when it comes to trying to uh, incorporate new things. Lack of perception of big environmental problems. And also the, 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 the current pedagogical approaches that we use may also uh, 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 you know, end up to be a challenge as we try to incorporate ESD. And of course, we also need to to rein in political support so that uh, when we want to implement these strategic plans, we have the political will of those who matter you know, in, in any country. Um, we also, I think even though we have these challenges uh, um, you know, um, as a country, there is a structure for, for coordinating uh, ESD activities in, in Eswatini. Although it is still lacking a few things which I will mention, but we do have that market in legacy. It's lacking a few things which include uh, where there is a need for an information sharing platform. There's a need to synchronize teacher training and ESD. Need adequate training on ESD, content, skills, and values and also the dimensions of ASD itself. Uh, we're still looking also in willingness on the part of leadership in tertiary institutions to invest time and resources towards mainstreaming ESD and also implementing uh, uh, it in, in this tertiary institution. So we still have those, those, those challenges. However, having said that, one is confident that through this training, our lecturers will acquire the necessary skills that they need to work towards sustainable development. We are all aware that uh, the region is challenged by inequalities and unemployment, especially among the youth. A degrading natural resource base and inadequate institutional development, as well as quality education, that I think is universal in, in, in our region. But as, as, as we embark on this training, it is imperative to remember that education for sustainable development is much broader. It uh, also focuses on a lot of thematic areas, such as increased agricultural productivity, sustainable industrialization, investment in infrastructure development, 
and renewable energy, among others. And all these need educators to target training, to target all their training programs to enhance sustainable development. As, as, as a Minister of Education and Training in Eswatini, we'd like to thank um, UNESCO Regional Office for Southern Africa, ROSA, and partners for this investment. We fully support this initiative, which is aimed at assisting our, our teacher uh, uh, educators. This initi initiative will not only benefit just these lecturers, but the entire Eswatini nation as it cascades uh, uh, to the teacher trainees and also to learners in schools. By extension, of course, the learners in schools will be applying this information learned in their homes, thus educating their parents and siblings about the issues of sustainability and its benefit. In this way, the entire nation will adapt to a new kind of approach to life and for all in, sustain in a sustainable environment. With the above, may I uh, uh, um, wish all of you the best and also the participants that will be participating in the courses and the best as they continue with their training. Thank you very much. Thank you, Program Director, and thank you, colleagues. Thank you, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Education and Training in Swatini. I hope with his speech, you realize why the involvement of government officials are very, is very important. We've seen how he has laid out what is the policy context, the different policies that uh, Eswatini is, has been working on, especially also on teachers and TVET. We've also listened to how he has raised the challenges of overcrowding of the teacher's curriculum. And we should be cognizant of this as we now embark on these teacher educators for ESD and wonder, are we adding another layer of uh, intense training for the teachers who are already overburdened? He also raised the question of pedagogy. And I think as our attendees will appreciate in the coming days when they participate, this is precisely one of the areas of work of this ESD online. Thank you very much again to the Undersecretary of the Ministry of Education and Training. And we would like to offer our thanks and appreciation to the Secretary General of the National Commission of UNESCO, who has been able to facilitate the policy dialogues as well as to our reference group member. The next senior official to give his uh, comments and speech is Dr. Godfrey Cafere, Director of Technical Services of the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology. I worked closely with Dr. Cafere when he was the Director of TVET in the Ministry of Labor in 2015. And so we're very happy that now as the Director of Technical Services at the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology, he is continuing our collaboration and support for work before on TVET and now on ESD. I would also like to remind you that Malawi is the incoming chair of SADC. And if you've noticed, most of your presidents were in Lilongwe last week. And just to also tell you that, in fact, on Thursday and Friday, no, on starting tomorrow, Malawi, the government of Malawi is organizing a green summit sponsor and where UN agencies and the FCDO, the UK government is supporting. And unfortunately, education and training is not there. It's mostly about environment, natural resources. So I think it's good that we strengthen the education component and we have all these uh, teacher educators to make sure that climate action, all this discussion on COP26 is not going to be possible if we don't have education and training. So Dr. Cafere, we're very pleased to welcome you and thank you again for all your efforts. Dr. Kafere, over to you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for those words of sentiment. Uh, Professor Hubert Gizen, Director of UNESCO Regional Office, Dr. Sizwe 
Mabizela, Vice Chancellor Lord's University, Michelle Butchard, Swedish International Development Agency, Dr. Shepard Ulenji, Sweden in International Center of Education for Sustainable Development, uh, Teacher Education Government Representative from Eswati, Malawi and Tanzania, all distinguished uh, panelists, Dr. Tiffany Banda, University of Malawi, our reference group, all distinguished participants to this important online course. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Let me also start by indicating that I'm standing in for uh, our permanent secretary, Mrs. Shikondano Musa, who is Secretary for Education in Malawi. She would have loved very much to be part of this important event. But due to other equally pressing events, she failed to do so. But she assured me that he, she wishes us all well in this important uh, gathering. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, I would like to appreciate the opportunity that UNESCO has given me to take part in this high level panel involving distinguished uh, professionals. It is an honor for the entire Ministry of Education in Malawi to be part of this great uh, event. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are aware, Malawi last week on 17th and 18th August 2021 hosted the 41st Ordinary Annual Summit of Heads of State and Government of the Southern African Development Community, SADC, at which Malawi was honored with assuming the leadership of SADC. The summit was held under the theme, bolstering Productive Capacities in the Face of COVID-19 Pandemic for Inclusive, Sustainable, Economic and Industrial Transformation. As you can agree with me, ladies and gentlemen, this training program on sustainability start with teachers aligns very well with this theme of the summit. As teachers and teacher educators, we have an important role to play in driving the agenda of SADC. The theme of the summit takes forward the implementation of the SADC industrialization strategy and roadmap 2015 to 2063, with a special focus on enhancing regional productive capacities. Under skills development, the SADIC strategy acknowledges education as pivotal and states that education should be repurposed to bridge the technology gap between the SADIC region and indeed its international competitors. You will agree with me that this course starting today is linking well with the study aspirations. As such, this course will empower you, our teachers and teacher educators with the knowledge and skills to assist our respective countries to achieve the SDGs and the development that we all aspire through the regional grouping of SADIC and indeed African Union. As the following quotation from an unknown author says, teaching is one profession that creates all other professions. Therefore, your roles as teachers and teacher educators in the development agenda of our countries is very crucial. Indeed, sustainability starts with teachers. Ladies and gentlemen, you may wish to know that Malawi, the Malawi government is committed to the implementation of the SDGs and the recently launched Malawi 2063 vision is aligned to the African Union Agenda 2063, the Africa we want, the SADIC industrialization strategy and roadmap, and to the sustainable development goals whose overall objective is to create a better and sustainable future for all. In the educational sector, the National Educational Sector Investment Plan sets out 
the government of Malawi education sector of goals, objectives, strategies, and how these are to be realized. Among the goals of education as outlined in the Educational Act of 2013, section five under subsection two, I will just mention a few of them that are related to this course, which we are starting today. And these are, A, develop in the students an awareness of appropriate environmental resource utilization and management practices, develop in students an appreciation of the impact of rapid population growth on the environment and the delivery of social services, and indeed develop the students' knowledge, understanding, and skills needed by Malawians to compete successfully in the modern and ever-changing world. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to highlight the many good practices and activities on education for sustainable development the Minister of Education has been implementing as follows. One, it has set up the Malawi Council for the Environment to oversee implementation of the ESD recommendations. It has also set up a cabinet committee on the natural resources and environment, which provides political and policy guidance. It has also set up a technical committee for sustainable development, which provides the technical support. The Minister of Natural Resources and Environment Affairs is the lead minister with Environmental Affairs Department as its secretariat. And it has developed the Malawi National Strategy for Sustainable Development. You may wish to agree with me that the implementation of the SDGs calls for partnership with various institutions. In this regard, let me acknowledge the inter-institutional cooperation around ESD that exists among the various stakeholders in Malawi. There has been positive collaboration between the Minister of Education and the Minister of Forestry and Natural Resources and the non-governmental organizations, which has resulted in the following uh, areas. The setting up of the technical committee, a national ESD steering committee comprising of all line ministries uh, with the Minister of Education as the lead. We have a number of NGOs and indeed institutions of higher learning, which are also addressing these uh, SD, S, ESD. And they are doing commendable work, including mainstreaming environment and sustainable issues in the curriculum, such as the University of Malawi, Total Land Care, and indeed Malawi Environmental Endowment Trust. We have also set the National Commission for Science and Technology, which is mandated to facilitate and enhance cooperation and coordination. Within this framework, the Minister of Education has also set up or established a Department of Science, Technology and Innovation in the sector, which is a very important tool in addressing education for sustainable development and climate change adaptation. Ladies and gentlemen, as a way forward, the Minister of Education is carrying out a number of activities addressing education for sustainable development, including it has organized a number of consultations with various stakeholders in the primary, secondary, and tertiary subsectors on the implementation of ESD activities. It has incorporated ESD in our curriculum. It is implementing with various stakeholders environmental education projects, including eco schools projects with the aim of raising learners' awareness of the environment and related sustainable development issues through classroom and outdoor studies. And through school and community action. It is also secondary and in the tertiary institutions. It has conducted training for lectures, curriculum specialists, inspectors, advisors, and teachers in the use of participatory, transformative pedagogy and critical thinking. It has also introduced ESD training courses 
in teacher training institutions and the engagement of teacher trainers in the material development through teamwork. And finally, it is reviewing the TVET policy of 2030 and the TVET Act of 1999 so that we are in line with the ESDs. Ladies and gentlemen, in my concluding remarks, let me indicate that with the coming of the sustainability starts with teachers, the ministry envisages improved quality of teachers in the teaching and learning processes. The SST is a plus to the country as it adds on the efforts of the Malawi government on issues of sustainable development. It is my plea to the participants of this workshop to take proactive steps in the advancement of ESDs at institutional levels. Malawi would like to thank UNESCO for this initiative as we empower our teachers and the teacher educators in the management of the ESDs. Ladies and gentlemen, with these few remarks, I would like to thank UNESCO, indeed all panelists and our Lord's University for your attention and wish you all a productive and exciting course. God bless us all. I thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kafere. I think it's clear that uh, in your presentation that Malawi is trying its best to make sure that there is uh, a chair of uh, SADC and with the COP26 to make sure that the different ministries are coming together. I think it's also good that you mentioned all the policy developments in TVET, and that's why we're very happy that we are joined here in our course by uh, several teacher educators in TVET uh, colleges. I think uh, more often than not, we have focused too much. We have focused our efforts on early childhood, primary, secondary teachers, and forget the role of teacher in TVET. And so we're very happy that we have quite a number of TVET educators in our midst. So another government official that we would like to hear from is Dr. Liabuene Matahabwa, who is the Commissioner for Education in Tanzania. Dr. Matabwa, take it away, please. Dr. Liabuene Matabwa. Hello. Yes, please, you're now at Audible. Can you open your video, please? Am I audible and visible now? Can you see me? Yes. You're, you you're can see me, eh? Yes. You can both see and hear me, I think. But, but yes. I'm not very, very clear. But it's, it's not, not very, very, very clear, clear, but it's okay. Not very visible. You can see a shade. Not very visible. Eh? Yes. We yeah, can I think see because it. of the lighting at the background. Yes, that's better. What about this position? Yeah, it's better because there's a light. The sun is coming from your back, and that's not okay. a good uh, visibility. Okay. Thank you, please. Thank you very much, distinguished participants in this very important webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed, good afternoon to you all. My name is Liabuene Mutahabwa, the Commissioner for Education in Tanzania, and I'll be representing the PS, Dr. Leonard Yakuilapo, who is currently attending other obligations. First of all, I should start by saying that when you speak last, the expectation is that the speaker should speak less and I'll make sure that I observe that, can I? Uh, I should start by saying that uh, I highly commend the sustainability starts with the teachers program by UNESCO, as it is very, very timely 
in our context. And uh, I really very much appreciate for the program to target uh, education. We heard from one of the speakers that education is one of the most powerful tool one can use to transform the world. And within the business of education, teachers hold a central position. And that is why the sustainable matter should start with teachers. So by targeting teachers, I think we have hit the nail on the head. I would like to commend UNESCO for targeting teachers. But then maybe I should extend a little bit the issue of teachers. We may be confined to thinking about school teachers, but we have other teachers who are not based in schools. These are parents and the community members. We should all know that parents are the first and the most continuous teachers in our, in our lives. So as we think about sustainability matters, let us embrace both school-based teachers and home or community-based teachers. That way, we will be sure about bringing transformation in our people to embrace ESD and SDG issues. That is comment number one, I think that we should all observe. And for the case of Tanzania, I would like to say a few things. Number one is that uh, at policy level, our current education training policy is quite clear that it seeks to produce graduates who are capable of taking care of the environment in all businesses, social and environmental issues stay at the core of all uh, economic activities in Tanzania. And that is reflected in your curricula from pre-primary all the way to higher education, ESD matters are considered in terms of cross-cutting issues. So if you go to teachers' colleges, for example, you will find a course entitled Development Studies. In that course, all sustainability matters are considered. Pre-primary education, likewise, all curricula are consider sustainability matters quite seriously. And uh, recently, we have uh, decided to revamp adult education. In our adult education programs, we consider issues of sustainability as being critical. So we are sure that when we make sure that adults in Tanzania are aware of the ESD matters, it is, and our young ones are also aware of ESD matters, we will be at a position of making sure that the future of Tanzania will realize the sustainable development goals 20, by 2030. And I would like to encourage my colleagues from other countries, Eswatini and Malawi, to really target young children and adults as well. If we do that, we'll be having sustainable plans for having our environment and the social aspects really sustainable. Um, so all uh, I have pointed out that the TVET, higher education, adult education, early childhood education, all those uh, levels of education embrace seriously the issue of sustainable development. And uh, recently we, are, we have decided to bring revolution in our teachers' colleges by making sure that instead of using firewood, for example, we would like to use biogas to make sure that the environment is not harmed uh, as we use energy. Uh, I think uh, the most now, um, the most serious challenge that we are having now, maybe I think also Malawi and my colleagues from West Trini, they may be also facing the same challenge, is the cultural constraints, cultural constraints to embrace uh, sustainability issues seriously. So it is possible to have very good document, but when it comes to implementation, you'll be surprised that what's on the ground is quite different from what is contained in the papers. So we are working very hard in Tanzania to make sure that we transform our people's mindsets to embrace ESD matters. Having said that, I think I don't have much to say. So uh, that is all I can say. And maybe lastly, is that we are happy in Tanzania, we have a very, very supportive regime when it comes to sustainability issues. The regime 
is very supportive uh, and we are sure that in the near future we will be able to realize the SDG by 2030. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'm sorry I might have used an informal speech because I'm just speaking this from my head. I had no time to prepare this, but I think I have decided I have gone through key issues happening in Tanzania with regard to SDG and ESD. Thank you very much and a good afternoon to you all. Thank you, the Commissioner of Education in Tanzania. Thank you for taking time out and again reminding us that in fact, uh, sustainable development, sustainable issues needed to be treated from a lifelong learning perspective, from early childhood, and even you mentioned adult education, which nobody has yet mentioned. It's also important that you have drawn your, our attention to, to the importance of culture. And I think the mindsets and how sustainable development is meeting all these mindsets is very important. And I'm sure in the course, you will be able, the participants will be able to work, to understand and work on this. So we have heard from the three government officials from Eswatini, Malawi, and Tanzania. And we see, and I hope you, as I said earlier, you're able to appreciate the importance of senior officials accompanying us. So we know the quality, policy context. And we have an, a surprise for you. We're very happy and pleased and privileged that Michelle Bouchard, we've talked a lot about how important the Swedish International Development Authority's uh, support has been very critical. Without their support, this uh, third series of Sustainability Starts with Teachers ESD course would not have been possible. So without further ado, thank you, Michelle, for being able to join us. Over to you. Oh, thank you, Hi. <laughs> That's really, um, it's such a pleasure to be able to talk to everybody and to basically to say thank you because it's uh, we at CEDA that thank you for being able to implement, especially when considering through the COVID times and what you have been able to accomplish. And this is the type of thing that we are actually lifting up as very innovative and very, uh, uh, you know, daring in the sense that you are taking it to on, on online and uh, also gathering all of the information that you're gathering for future use uh, for, uh, and I'm hoping even for Swedish uh, teachers in the future because I think that what's going on now at, at Rhodes University and uh, with UNESCO, uh, the, the partnership that you have is extremely important. Somebody mentioned partnership and I think that that uh, is a very key word. Um, we have a, a, another couple of, of uh, key words that I picked up on. And uh, I wanted to say that <clears throat> what we're talking a lot about at CEDA is systems approach. And I think that that's what everybody is basically talking about. Um, building teachers uh, capacity so that they can go on to build uh, the future. When was, I'm not as eloquent as the, as the previous speakers because they were so inspiring, but teachers build all the other professions. So yes, that I took with me. Thank you very much for that. Um, and teachers, I think, are the influencers. I mean, who doesn't remember their childhood teacher? One, of, one will stand out. And this is why I think that you have an extremely, you, the participants of this program have an, a very uh, critical you know, position and opportunity to do a lot towards a sustainable you know, future and development for, for your countries. And, and I'm hoping even can, show the way for the rest of us. Uh, we uh, in Sweden are trying, we have our strategies, but we also have our challenges. And, and I think that we're not quite there. We, we, we really need to also learn better. And, and I think that um, to, to, to find the different roads and different ways to, to live much more within sustainable, um, within our means and, and, and take better care of our resources our natural resources. So we need ESD. We need education for sustainable development. And we need to learn probably in the future from you. So uh, I'm really looking forward to a continued uh, cooperation on that. 
at that level and um, bringing this into the Swedish schools. And I also want to uh, wish the best of luck for, for the this participants of this program. And, um, and of course, for our, our wonderful colleagues at Rhodes University and at UNESCO who have really made a fantastic job doing this. Uh, I will say that Sweden is giving uh, a lot of focus on environmental um, uh, issues. And also, of course, as we all know, on, on uh, humanitarian um, and on um, uh, women's rights. Women, and so we are trying in a way to combine all of this into the human rights. Uh, it's a basic human right for everybody to enjoy an environment that they can, can, that can sustain them. And, and that's where it all comes together. Um, so um, I can just say thank you and I'm uh, wishing you all the best. And um, you know, Sweden is really looking forward to hearing about your, pro your progress and, and the projects that you will implement because believe it or not, we actually do use these as, uh, as examples, as inspiration, and as a means for us to uh, motivate why uh, education for sustainable development and this particular program is important. So uh, for the sake of future funding, <laughs> please give us the ammunition that we need to be able to motivate it. Uh, thank you so much and best of luck. And I won't take any more of your time. So I'll follow the Zen principle of less is more. Thank you, Michelle. I mean, we should really thank uh, Sida, who is our most valuable partner. Without Sida, we won't be having this course. And I think we appreciate that you're saying about it's a systemic approach. And that's what UNESCO and uh, Rhodes are also aiming for. That's why while this is built on focused on capacity building for teachers. We are cognizant that we need to bring policymakers. And as previously noted that we have five areas in the ESD Global Action Program. It's about policy. It's about whole institutional approach. It's about building capacities. It's about involving the young people. And it's about involving the community. So all of these are inputting in the systemic approach and we very much appreciate the importance of human rights and tying it to ESD. ESD is not just about saving the earth, but it's really very much connected to the lives of people. So thank you very much, Michelle and Sida for your valued partnership. And I'm in behalf of the previous participants and the more than 100 participants that we have now, Thank you very much. And I will now turn over to Hela, who I always say the who I always call the ESD guru of Southern Africa, but sometimes she cringes when I say that. So Hela, take it away. Thank you very much. Without Sida and uh, Rhodes University and specifically Hela, this would not have been possible. Thank you, Hela. Take it away. Bye. Thank you so much, Carol, and thank you very, very much to all of our speakers today, uh, Professor uh, Hubert. It's just always wonderful to to hear him and his strong support for this work. Um, we were very pleased you could join us this morning. My own Vice Chancellor, who is, I think, just the best Vice Chancellor on the continent, <laughs> Dr. Mabizela. It's fantastic to have you with us and for your wonderful words. As always, that they inspire us with the depth and the, the ethics of care that you bring to the way in which you run our university and our community. Thank you so much for that. I think our participants also um, appreciated that. I also want to appreciate and thank the um, uh, our government officials from Eswatini, Malawi, and Tanzania. Um, it's so important to have uh, your support for our teacher educators and for the work that we are aiming to do in terms of developing and strengthening the sustainability opportunities for the next generation of both teachers but also pupils in our schools. I think UNICEF has indicated to us that by 2050, Africa will be the home to the world, to half of the world's young people. 
So the work of these teachers um, is so important. It, we can't actually overemphasize, you know, how important the work of, of uh, our teacher educators are, who are preparing the future teachers to work with the future generations um, on our continent. So we're very much looking forward to, to seeing the fantastic work that is coming out of the different countries and the support from the ministries, as Carol said, it's not possible to do this without that support. We really, really need it. All of our, our projects need the support and we will be in ongoing communication with the policy community as we do this work. One of the components of the program is a policy component. I think Michelle will remember she joined us when we had the policy dialogue and we had a fantastic engagement with policymakers from the countries that have previously been involved in the past two years. I also want to appreciate uh, Shepard from Swedest. You know, Shepard is one of our most important partners. He is always there and he's always behind every single one of our teacher educators that are doing their work here. So for Swedest, uh, Shepard also to thank you and to the community in Swedest. We know that Swedest is a bit like the ELRC. It's not one person, it's this community of people that are working together. Um, and we have some of them on the platform. I saw Martin joined us this morning and, and, and we will be having some of our other Swedish colleagues joining us as we go through the program again. So again, to appreciate the, the relationship with our Swedish colleagues. Um, my colleagues from the UNESCO office, they are just the best people to work with um, other than my vice chancellor. <laughs> Um, we have Charles, Dr. Charles Chikunda, who is just incredible the way he holds this program together with such uh, creativity and warmth and enthusiasm and commitment and uh, motivation. He is able to motivate all of us to, you know, feel like, you know, this is just the most important work for us to do. And it is thanks very much to, to, to Charles and the colleagues in the UNESCO office, Patience, Carol, and the team there, they also work as a team there, that we have 166 participants that have been in, in, in 77 institutions, have been doing some of the most incredible uh, transformative projects, as Hubert mentioned. So these are not just small transformative projects. We've seen, you know, some of them are actually affecting whole institution change and others are reaching widely out into their communities, inspiring the new teachers, the next generation of teachers to take this work into the, the classrooms, as Hubert mentioned, because if we don't reach the classrooms, it's, it's really important that we you know, hold the, the, the young people in mind. Our TVET institutions, some fantastic examples of you know, green circular economy thinking coming through from the TVET institutions, the early childhood educators of done lovely work with new types of literacy and making new types of teaching materials from you know the waste that would otherwise just be thrown away and inspiring young young uh, children and also teachers to, to to do things differently and to think holistically and to think into a systems approach i think michelle your uh, words have been uh, very much appreciated also in the in the chat um, and I think people have also thanked you for the kind way in which you work with us in Southern Africa. It's always a pleasure for us to work with CEDA. I've worked with CEDA now, I think ever since I can remember, <laughs> in the early 90s when we started this work, you know, CEDA was our main partner in 1992. Um, we, were, we were forming the SADC Regional Environmental Education Program and CEDA was the main partner there between ISA and uh, the SADC Secretariat, the Environment and Land Management Sector, who wanted to work also with the SADC Education Sector in order to you know, take the next step in our regional integration, because the early step was the liberation struggle. Following the liberation struggle, we had Swedish support to take the next steps, which was to build a sustainable future for our region and of course, we can't do that without looking after our people, our children, our teachers, and our natural resources, as we, we can see so clearly now. So CEDA has been a partner with this community ever since those, those early days, and in fact, even before 
when the first learning for sustainability programs were introduced into Namibia um, before the, the, the liberation struggle even was over. So it's a long partnership. It's a very strong partnership. And we deeply appreciate the relationship with CEDA. Um, I also want to uh, pay a very big homage and thanks to the alumni that have made this program possible. I mentioned we started early in the 90s, early 90s, and over the years we've worked with literally thousands of people in the SADC region, thousands who've done the uh, international certificate courses, the sustainability starts with teachers courses, the early uh, um, ESD leadership courses that were done in partnership with, with SADC and UNESCO. And we have thousands of alumni. And, you know, some of these alumni have just, you know, stepped up to the, the, the game and they are now regional reference group members. And without them, we could not run this program. So we have uh, a number of them on the platform with us as well. And we do welcome uh, Tiffany Banda from Dr. Tiffany Banda from Malawi, uh, Dr. Victoria Ferdinand, and Dr. Um, Daniel Sabai from uh, Tanzania, and uh, Dr. Cindy fr from Eswatini. Without them, this program could not operate. And we're drawing much on our alumni also to bring the program uh, to life. So over the next three weeks, we'll be having a webinar and we'll be inviting what we're calling alumni features where we will be bringing our alumni together to, to come and teach into the program, to share their experience and to show you know, what is possible when one can, can make these commitments to, to social change in your community. So I want to thank them as well. It's a very special thank you to them. Without them, we couldn't we couldn't do this. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to thank the team that has been behind this online course because we are. I want to put it into the chat. We have in the last since Thursday we've been able to register no less than two hundred and seventy two participants for the twenty twenty one sustainability starts with teachers course. We have 87 that are registered from Malawi. We have 73 that are registered from Tanzania. And we have 112 participants registered from Eswatini. This is a, is a record. <laughs> it's a record in the SADC region. We've never had 272 participants on one course. So it's a record. We're extremely excited about it. One of the things we're doing is we're trying to navigate the challenges of data, data provisioning. Uh, for so many participants, we're in the process of doing that. So those who we're trying to get uh, at least 10 gigabytes of data to every participant by, if we can, today or tomorrow, we're having to navigate networks and providers, but we, we're working on it. And we will be uh, supporting all of the participants to be successful on the online course. So from my side, I want to say a very big thank you to those that have opened the program for us today, for the team behind the scenes, for the colleagues that make this happen. These things are never uh, loan, loan jobs. They are a big team of people that are willing to, to you know, put out the extra steps and, and work together to make a difference in the world. So thank you very much to everybody. Thank you to Carol, who's been chairing our session today. And we look forward to those participants that can join us tomorrow. We will be having a keynote presentation by Carol, and she will be uh, talking to us about education transformation in the SADC region for anybody who can join us. And then following that, I'll also be giving some background on ESD in Southern Africa, the past, the present, and the future. So thank you very, very much, everybody. Um, and over to you, Carol. I think that's uh, all that I have to say in terms of saying thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Hela. I think we are going to end this on a high note with your most uh, inspiring appreciation. And of course, with the previous speakers, high level, our government officials, the vice chancellor, our director, and of course, Sida and yours. So. I look, we look forward to all of you. Thank you very much. And again, thank you for the technical team. We have our reference group. We have all these uh, knowledgeable people on ESD, but without the technical team backing this online course, we will not be here. Thank you and have a nice time in this spring, 
day in Southern Africa. Goodbye. Thank you, Caroline. Goodbye.